So the other night I'm scrolling through TikTok and I see this. And after I seen this, I remembered how good GTA 4's multiplayer really was. Then I realized that GTA Online is pathetic. Here's my biggest problem with GTA Online. It's not the economy or the hackers or any of that. It's the combat. It doesn't reward skill, it rewards people with money. I know a lot of you will defend GTA Online and say it's so much better than GTA 4's multiplayer because it has missions and car customization, and those are all fair points. But let me ask you a question. What is the point of grinding for all these nice cars that get added and spending time customizing them when as soon as you pull it out of the garage, it gets blown up by a flying bike? Personal vehicles are basically just for private sessions because you can't cruise around in public sessions and also be able to defend yourself. GTA 4's combat rewards skill and knowledge. You have to learn the weapons the bullet spread and all the little tricks. G10 Lines combat throws all of that away. There's no skill in spamming homing missiles. You didn't earn that KD ratio. You paid for it. You let the game aim for you. You even killed yourself for it. You did everything except earn it. And now you expect us to be impressed with it? You expect me to fight you when you're so dependent on homing missiles, orbital cannons, ghost organization, bulletproof helmets, and bull shark? Pathetic. And that's what G10 Lines combat has become. Pathetic and embarrassing. I never thought I'd live like this. No? Not fucking likely! Let's talk about explosives in GTA. In almost every other game I've ever played, the explosion doesn't cause you to instantly die unless you're too close to it. In most games, you just lose some health. In GTA 4, your body flies and sometimes the landing might kill you, but it's not a death sentence. Explosives do have their part in GTA 4's combat, but you rarely ever see anyone using them because they're a tool for certain situations, not the main weapon. In GTA Online, explosives are the only weapon. It's the only choice because an explosive is a death sentence. Doesn't matter how far away you are. If you're in range at all, you're dead. Game over. Which makes them very overpowered. Why would a player use a regular weapon when they have a chance of missing their shot and being out-aimed and killed? With an explosive, they don't have a chance at missing. If you're in the radius, you're dead. It's as simple as that. So it makes all the weapons in the game useless. Why use a shotgun when you have an explosive shotgun? Why use a sniper when there's an explosive sniper? Why use an AP pistol in a drive-by when you have sticky bomb? It takes all the fun out of the game. In GTA 4, if I'm cruising in a nice car and someone rolls up on me, I have a very fair chance to defend myself. And if I die, it's because I was bad at aiming or I wasn't paying attention. In GTA Online, you don't even know that you're being attacked until it's too late. To be competitive, you have to wear clothes you don't like and drive around in vehicles you don't like. At least when GTA 4 finally did introduce C4 and its DLC expansion, you could only throw it out of your car one way, meaning it still did take some skill to get it in the right position. After all, you have to anticipate your enemy's movements. In GTA Online, your character breaks his arm bending it backwards so you can throw your sticky bombs as high or as low as you want. In GTA 4's DLC, there was a delay when you detonate a sticky bomb. In GTA Online, it's instant, no matter how far away you are from it. Not that it matters when vehicles like the Mark II Oppressor still exist. So at the end of the day, customization and personal vehicles are kind of pointless when a five-year-old can let the game aim his missiles for him and destroy you. GTA 4's map was designed for boots on the ground combat. There's cover everywhere. Weapons and health strategically placed around the map and every alleyway and building was designed with exploration in mind. You can clearly see it as you play. Even when you think there's no way up there, you end up finding a way. Meanwhile, in GTA Online, there's barely any roof access that doesn't involve using a helicopter and you can't even parkour or grab onto ledges to pull yourself up somewhere. Say you're in a scenario where you're on the ground and someone in a helicopter is trying to kill you. Here's how it plays out in GTA 4. I'm riding shotgun. My character smashes the glass and leans his entire your body out of the window to get an accurate shot. There's something so satisfying about that. The way he keeps his hand on the roof of the car to hold himself up while aiming. I don't know why G10 line doesn't have this, but it's very satisfying in GTA 4. Anyway, the helicopter is shooting at us, but there's no homing missiles. So he actually has to take aim, control his helicopter, and shoot at the same time. Effort like this would make G10 line players afraid to even attempt it. The MP5 doesn't have enough range to do any damage to the helicopter. So I bail from the car and head upstairs onto the subway platform. I grab an RPG and run to the other side the airport. See how right here that left you enough room to jump off and land on the roof with an RPG spawn nearby? This wasn't an accident. It's almost like the map was designed with parkour in mind. I get to the other side of the building. He has no idea I've even made it this far. Here's my chance. Better not mess it up. Pull out the RPG, aim where he's going to be, not where he is, and fire. <laughs> now here's how that same situation would go down in GTA Online. Or it could have also went down like this. And finally... Oh, 
Now you tell me which kill is more satisfying. Honestly, tell me which clip gets your adrenaline pumping. Cause I'll tell you what, I recorded both of these clips and the G10 line kill didn't make me feel a damn thing. I wasn't proud or impressed or even satisfied because there was no skill in this clip. But in this clip, I felt like the man. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make in this video. Combat in G10 line is sad, boring, and a major letdown. How did Rockstar get it so right in 2008 for a multiplayer that was never meant to be big, but mess it up in a game that's constantly updated and actually becoming a standalone title? The combat in GTA 4 never feels stale thanks to lobby customization. You can change pretty much whatever you want. Like here's a pistols only lobby. Really changes how you plan your attacks. There's also loads of enterable buildings you can run into when being chased to have a last standoff with your enemies. You will never see gameplay like this in GTA online and that kind of makes me sad and that's the same feeling i had when i went from gta 4 to gta online back in october 2013 the feeling of disappointment and regret which is funny considering the original version of gta online is a lot similar to gta 4 when you compare it to gta online now in 2021 all of these design choices and additions rockstar have made only neuters the pvp and makes it boring it also means that new players have no way to defend themselves in gta 4 whether you're max rank or just starting out either way you had a fair chance at defending yourself because the game was designed around skill skill, not shark heart sales. GT Online doesn't push you to become a better player, to improve your aim, your reflexes, and reaction time, because you don't need any of that as long as you have a credit card and can afford to buy Mark II oppressors and all of this overpowered bullshit. And that's why GT Online's combat is pathetic. So to put things simply, GTA 4 is based and GT Online is cringe. There, I finally said it after seven years on this channel. I've actually done this stupid video.